Swamiji. Today our young generation is increasingly tuned to a logical, rational and a scientific mindset and is often uninterested in our age-old rituals and traditions. How do we inculcate to them our religious and spiritual heritage with a modern, logical approach? It is a very important and pertinent question. When children raise a question regarding a ritual or a spiritual practice, their parents are often seem to be unprepared or uninformed to give them convincing and satisfactory answers. Why is it so? Because many of them don't have a clue. They tend to follow some rituals or observe some spiritual disciplines based on their simple faith that they imbibed during their childhood. Now, can we expect the same attitude and approach from our present generation? No. Their judgment and belief are mostly based on logic and rationality. We should be very clear about this. The modern education system and continuous exposure to digital knowledge have made a huge influence in their thinking pattern. If they have a doubt now, who will they approach? First, not their parents or teachers or close relatives. By default, they will search on it on, on the online. From the moment they wake up, when we say online, we would prefer to use the word Google Baba. From the moment they wake up to the time they retire to bed, most of their quality time is spent on digital devices, either for education purposes or for the entertainment. We cannot expect the present generation to look for guidance or support from their parents in the way in which the parents' generation looked up to and were guided by their parents or elders or teachers. First of all, we have to acknowledge and accept this matter of fact. Then we can find a new fresh approach to face the challenge. To begin with, we must have a, a clear, credible, up-to-date knowledge about the rituals, traditions or practices that we want to pass on to our younger generation. We should equip ourselves. We have to remember one thing. Indian spirituality is not based on a dictum or a dogma. It is not meant to be followed blindly. It is verified from generation to generation and verifiable even now. We got to verify it by ourselves and test its utility and relevance in our own experience. If children are uninterested in some aspects like doing a puja, then it is our responsibility to convey to them what this puja signifies, what each item symbolizes, and the meaning and significance of the mantra. If we fully know what we are involved in, then our exchange would find the meaning and purpose of doing it. And wherever possible, we must try to link our faith and tradition to our workaday life. If our children are convinced about efficacy of these practices in achieving success and excellence in life, they will surely follow them on their own. The possible way to introduce the spiritual aspect in the growing generation is to make them understand that spirituality is not disconnected from the common run of life. We repeat again. The possible way to introduce the spiritual aspect in the growing generation is to make them understand that spirituality is not disconnected from the common run of life. If we reflect a bit deeper, we would know that spirituality stands for developing proper human relationship at home, at workplace and in society, along with unleashing our creative potential lying dormant inside us. This is being made possible by trying to realize the spirit in all of us. The spirit which is behind our every thought, every word, every deed. This is being made possible by trying to realize the spirit in all of us. And spirit stands for, easy way to understand spirit is life force, consciousness, intelligence. Everyone knows what life force stands for. The heart beats, 
the blood circulates, the breathing goes on, the digestion takes place, you know. If these four are not uh, there, we will not be there. That is what is called the life force, the heartbeat. Consciousness, consciousness or awareness is intertwined with the life force. We know that we are sitting, we know that we are talking, we know that we are, we are, the sense of beingness, that is what is called consciousness. Behind everything that we see, there is a comfort. There is an intelligence, primordial intelligence behind it. Then there are no specks in the world, somebody should conceive, no? Nobody is there to guide. It may not be in this form, but in some form it first came out. So God can be our spirit, it stands for life force, consciousness, intelligence. If this is properly conveyed to the growing generation, they will certainly hear to this. Because this is something which we can easily understand, not an utopian dream. Hari